All right, let's talk about ROS packages. Latest data, well, this is not latest data, this is a year old. I will get you more data in about 90 days on ROS2, but last year we had over six, like this, for these guys. Okay, okay, we're good now. All right, so last year, close to 600 million ROS packages were downloaded off our servers. That does not include Docker containers. That does not include virtual machines. That's where we're at in terms of volume of traffic to the ROS community. It's probably much, much bigger. That's, a, that's your lower bound right now. Uh, I say that to back it up with some more numbers here. If you go and, you know, and this is an academic exercise here. If you look at the number of papers that now cite the canonical ROS1 paper, uh, we're at 9,260, which is pretty good. It grew 25% in 18 months, uh, and we thought that was finally enough. So we went and made a new canonical ROS2 paper that we just published in Science Robotics. The reason I mention this is if you are waiting to move to ROS2, this is not an academic paper. This is a paper of six different organizations using ROS2 in production right now and achieving their goals. We did uh, land, sea, air, space, and industrial applications. There's one example from each. So if you are trying to convince someone that they should use ROS2, shoot them that paper, say like, here's a bunch of examples of people having success. If you're using ROS2 and write something, we'd like you to cite this as well. Uh, speaking of academics, but also this community, we're now that ROS2 is really rocking and rolling, we'd like to up the code quality even more. And we're asking people to be very explicit about how good their code is, not how good their code is, but how well they're testing things, how well they're documenting things, what it looks like. One of the biggest complaints I hear from industry is that I get this academic package and it's just unusable. We want that to end. We want to have a sense of how people are, uh, how good the code is before people get really into using it. So we're asking everyone to take a look at Rep 2004, which is basically um, our code quality guidelines. And then you just sort of self-report, hey, I'm about here. And we can actually, in certain situations, we can get people to kind of come in and help you move up and down the ranks. Let's talk about ROS2 life cycle. If you guys have not seen this, if you have not thought about it, it's a problem. So we release a new version of ROS every year. Um, this little timeline at the bottom of rolling, rolling is now the foundation of ROS2. Everything, every release is gonna come off rolling. It's actually a fairly quick process. Humble release was probably one of the smoothest releases we've ever done. Um, right now, uh, we just put dashing to bed. Uh, Galactic is going to be gone this year. Couple things you need to think about. Melodic goes end of life in less than one year. Um, Foxy goes end of life in less than one year. Uh, Foxy is also the last version of ROS where you will have a good ROS1, ROS2 bridge. So think about that for a second. It is really, really time to plan moving to ROS2. <laughs> Uh, and I'm going to talk about where the transition is in a little bit. I can pull the numbers of all the download stats and what version of ROS people are using. Pulled it in April 2021, pulled it in April 2022. We're now at about a quarter of all ROS users using ROS2. And most of them are actually on Foxing and Blackpick. And we think they're going to be on Humble here fairly shortly. Um, one thing to note, though, I think this is really, really interesting. Light pink, kinetic, we end of life it, everyone left. It's down to 4% within a year. So once we shut things down, people really do move. And I don't want to be mean and to force people to do it. So you should start moving of your own volition. Uh, so the good news is Humble's out. Humble has a five year um, support lifetime. It will be good till 2027. Uh, Docker containers are available. The, if you look at the release notes, the code, there, there are a few code things that are important. There's a lot of bug fixes, but by and large, everything we were doing in there was more documentation and cleaning up, you know, docs related things. It's ready to go. All the, most of the rough edges have been filed off at this point. Um, and 
you know, the other thing that I'll talk about briefly is I think a lot of the cool stuff is now coming from the community. It's not coming into Ross Corp. Um, and if I have to say it again, Ross Bridge is gone and humble. It'll be very painful to make a Ross Bridge. So get going. So one thing we, we did a lot of work uh, with UC Berkeley right before the humble release um, to release Fog Ross 2. This is really cool. This is a, it's basically a cloud agnostic uh, Ross tool. So say you have a Ross node and you wanna attach it to cloud. I'm not gonna say which one, you can pick your cloud or hopefully eventually you'll be able to pick your cloud. And it will set up all the like VPNs and all the other sort of like cloud connection stuff. So if you want to, uh, you know, do perception in the cloud because you don't have a fast graphic card on your robot or archive video or move bag data up to do machine learning, it makes it really, really easy to get started. This is out of the Goldberg lab at UC Berkeley. Uh, other cool stuff, Fox Club. This is a startup out of San Francisco. They are a spin out of Cruise, the autonomous vehicle company owned by GM. Uh, they spun out basically a whole new set of graphical libraries for viewing your data, watching your data. Think of like Arvis in a browser on steroids. Very, very cool stuff. We're checking out. Works with Humble right away. This is the big carrot I'm offering everyone. Open Robotics did a good bit of work with NVIDIA, and we're also working probably with a few other hardware vendors here to do hardware acceleration for ROS. So... Essentially what happens, you have a bunch of ROS nodes they are moving data between each other. They're moving data between the nodes to the graphics card, to the CPU, back to the graphics card, to the CPU. We started to put tools in to fix this. Now, this is NVIDIA's numbers, but I think it's probably reasonably representative. People are seeing up to a 10x speed up in terms of perception performance. Okay, so those, those are a couple of the cool things that are in Humble that you should go check out. Uh, middleware. Middleware is still something that is new in ROS2 that people have difficulty with. The ROS2 Technical Steering Committee every year puts together a middleware uh, selection report. We work with the, the tier one vendors. We take a look at what they're doing. Uh, we evaluate it. We like, we're starting to look at different scenarios that we believe exist out in the real world and understanding the performance. There's lots and lots of good data there. We're actually starting to look to expand into other like Maybe Xeno would be a good RMW. We don't know yet, but we're looking at it. If I look tired, it's because I launched Humble and we also launched a uh, robot about a month ago. Pre-orders started May the 4th. And so robots, TurtleBot 4s are starting to roll out to people right now. Um, one cool thing that I really, really love on this robot is we have a new depth camera vendor. If you haven't heard of them, it's a... Uh, a company called Lexanis, and this is called the OPD, which stands for Open CV Depth Camera. Uh, it's been really, really great. One of the big things that I think started to happen is we're working with the Open CV team, and they're starting to kind of like grow up like a little open robotics. Um, really, really powerful depth camera, and uh, for everyone here, IP67 rating and POE is coming, I think, sometime soon. Uh, we also released a full gazebo simulation of this robot for free with everything in it. So hopefully as we sort of progress with Humble here, we'll do a lot of documentation work showing how everything in Humble works on a simulated turtle bot so you can get used to it. And um, we're, you know, essentially at this point with Humble, we're going through the documentation very, very explicitly. And I'm going to actually be pushing the TSC to fill out a lot more of the tutorials for Humble, so it becomes easier and easier to use. Uh, I think my thunder got stolen in the last talk, but another project that we've been working on that we don't talk a lot about yet at Open Robotics is we're working on this thing called Open RMF. So Open RMF is for fleets, multiple fleets of robots working together with infrastructure. Um, this, this project started as a project for the Singaporean hospital system who has you know, robots moving medications from floor to floor, you know, clean bed sheets, food, and different robots do different tasks. And they needed a tool where they had some ROS robots, some non-ROS robots, and how do we get all of them to work together with people? So this is all open source. Uh, we just launched, I think it's open-rmf.org. That's the, the new sort of landing page. It'll give you a quick description of what that looks like. Um, and this all also works with Gazebo. So if you're planning out a, say, 
a massive fulfillment facility or you're trying to get manipulators working with AMRs and want to do a sim of that, that is currently possible with OpenRMF. Other cool stuff going on, Ross is starting to go to space. Uh, so we're working on some of the ground processing capabilities for the NASA Viper mission. Um, but there's also a bunch of other WASP projects that are working on space. I put one here, which is a simulation of a Europa lander. There's the Astrobees, which are currently running on the ISS. And we're starting to work on this thing that we're calling space ROPs, which is taking all these different packages and building basically space hardened or aerospace grade ROS, like a ROS subset. Um, we're looking for, and I think this is the right audience for it, we're looking for collaborators on that project right now. So if that's something that you might be interested in, please let me know. Um, I just came from ICRA last week and the most interesting thing I think, well, most interesting non-paper thing at ICRA was the F110. So F110 is essentially a bunch of students buying like $200 RC cars, strapping uh, LIDARs on them and like a Jetson running Foxy and trying to get these cars racing around. They're going pretty fast. They're starting to like overtake each other and do cool stuff, but there was easily four or 500 graduate students at ICRA working on Ross 2 Foxy doing cool stuff. Um, and what's really cool is there's also this Indie Autonomous Challenge, which are half million dollar Delara race cars, which are sort of now using those RC car students as feeders into these autonomous race cars. Uh, this is just interesting. If you guys are looking for something to support out in the community, looking to hire, I would start looking in this direction. Uh, and then just a little bit of shameless self-promotion. We've got Roscoe and Kyoto coming up in uh, October 23rd. Um, we have a new podcast. If you're doing cool Ross stuff, we'd love to talk to you about how it happens, what it does, what it looks like. Um, it's also Ross Discourse. I post like a weekly wrap up of all the new packages, anything that's going on. If you like don't have time to read all the websites and the everything on the internet, it's just like a one-stop shop for all the good news. And that's about it. Shoot me your last two questions. All right, questions for Kat. We'll try to get the last time. Sorry. Question. Fantastic. So excited to have just more of a community question. Do you know the status of any of the ROS and what was being reported you know, to ROS2, like a ride? Okay, the question was, do you know the status of any of the ROS2 books right now? Uh, I do not, because I'm not a publisher. Uh, we focus on the docs and tutorials. That's where we put most of our effort right now. I think there is one coming out, but that just came out of, what is it, MEAP? M-E-A-P, something like that, but I'm not sure. No Ross, two questions? Documentation's good? So the one of the big things I see with that is, you know, everyone's got their dependencies and their packages and, and they want to make the jump, but then they're waiting for somebody. And I asked them, well, did did you file an issue? Did you ask the maintainer? Did you tell them you want to do this and you're willing to help? And about 80% of the time, the answer is no. So the, start with the simple solution, which is tell the other maintainer, like, I want to do this. And then B, can I help you do this? That should help a lot. Yeah, I think that's actually in this community, right? You're trying to do that, right? Yeah. Hey, so what's the best way to get involved in space <laughs> Come talk to me. Oh, the question was Space Ross. And the answer is come talk to me. Like we're in the requirements gathering phase. Like what is it going to look like? Who's gonna be involved? That sort of thing. Yeah.